Okay, let's start. Uh, now uh, we will have over here our top referee, and, and he will talk about the interesting topic, and it's uh, communication between uh, coaches and referees. Uh, and he will not talk about uh, rules, like uh, what is traveling, but what is not, but uh, exactly the communication. And, uh, uh, I think some of you have heard it in, uh, in FEC uh, clinics also, and uh, I heard it uh, uh, in, uh, in VTB clinics, uh, I worked uh, in VTB league, so it is actually very, very interesting, and, uh, and now coaches, coaches put us, now you can you know, hit him, <laughs> so be ready, but he has only 45 minutes, so... Uh, <laughs> No, no. Let him start and then start to start to uh, ask questions. But actually, uh, what I wanted to tell before that topic is, uh, I have heard it now a couple of times, and, and it's very interesting. And I think it helps you, uh, and it helps uh, basketball culture at all because if you start to behave on the court. Badly, it influences the kids, it influences the parents, and so on. So, take the best out of this 45 minutes. Okay, right. Hello to everybody. My name is Rai Berandi. I'm working in the Estonian Basketball Federation, in Referees Department, and I'm FIBA referee since 2014. And I'm working also in Euroleague the last three years. Uh, I'm in the beginning of my career, but I'm working to get the better and better, like you are working. And today's, like Art already said, our topic is communication between coaches and referees. This is very difficult. This is one of the difficult uh, part of the game. Uh, if we leave the play calling situations, but the communication in every, we can say, in life situation, on the court, off the court, it's not easy. On, on the job, whatever you are doing, this is where it's the human beings, there is all, always conflict, and uh, it is natural that uh, between referees and coaches are conflict situation most of the types on the board who are not agreeing. Uh, I will start with rule, how to communicate with referees on the board. It is written on the rule book. The coaches or the assistant coach may go to the scorer table during the game to obtain the statistic information only when the ball becomes, becomes there and the game clock is done. But what we see usually, the coaches are going during the game to the table, shouting, asking information from the scorer, from the commissioner, if he's on, behind the table, but uh, this is how it should not be. The coach may communicate in the court courteous man manner with the official during the game to obtain the information only when the ball is there and the game clock is stopped. The same like with table officials. <coughs> Either the coach or assistant coach, but only one of the, them in any given time is permitted to remain standing during the game. They may address the players verbally during the game provided they may they remain with, within their team bench area. The assistant coach shall not communicate with the officials, only with the players. With the referees can communicate only with only the head coach. Now, I have one example of the coaches behaving, but they should not do like this. This is the old video, but you will see.
In this clip, also the referee behave uh, wrongly. He cannot touch the, the coach. Whatever the coach is doing, like you saw from the video, the referee touched the coach, he immediately came hand. Next time, coach can push the referee. Here also, referee made a mistake to communicate uh, with coach. Relationships. How we can build our relationships between referees and coaches? Any ideas? What we need? Do you have any ideas what we need to have good relationships on the court? Respect. Respect. We need to speak. We need to communicate. That's right. To solve the problems, we need to communicate. No bad calls. <laughs> <laughs> so, something more? No bad calls? We need to cooperate on the court. Whatever that is going, we need the cooperation between us. We need understanding. Okay, it's, it is, coaches have different view of the game, referees have different view, and spectators have different view of the game. But we need to get closer our understanding of the game, what is going on the court. It is, all, it is not always easy, but we need to communicate to get closer our understanding. We need acceptance. We need to... Referees need to accept coach, and referee coach need to accept the referee. Okay, we don't like each other maybe, but we need to work these two hours on the board to finish the game. And we need respect. Like Alar said, we need to respect each other on the board. What that, what, whatever is going on the board should stay on the board game is finished, then a lot of coaches are taking the game together with him off the court, on the dressing rooms, when they were after, afterwards on the, on, off the court, uh, in front of the gym, they are still complaining. But some, some of the, let's say, a lot of coaches also taking the, what was on the game, stayed in, in the game, and whatever, when we meet after the game, Everybody is happy. This is also communication, part of the communication, very, very important. How we communicate. <coughs> Coach versus referee. In our job, the conflict is natural. Uh, why we have the conflict on the, on the court? So, some exams and coaches. Done. Referees don't know the rules. Referees don't know the rules. <laughs> Something more, Daniel, to repeat. They don't understand the game. They don't understand the game. What else we have? Like? Like before, wrong call, wrong decisions. This is the main topics why we have the conflict. Coaches, coaching their team from the head, heart. They're, they're uh, supporting their team, of course, and uh, we cannot do nothing about this. But the referees whistle with the eyes. We're teaching the referees if we don't see, we don't call. We don't need voicing calls. Sometimes referees are covered from a defensive player of, or offensive player and uh, we cannot see the situation and we cannot or not call. Usually the voicing calls, 90% voicing calls are, are wrong. The play, 
defensive player are playing good defense, tap the ball away, and referee what they're doing, beep, goal. But the player are playing good defense and we're making the wrong goal. We don't have to like each other, but we don't have to work with each other in, in, in the game, like uh, I told before. We need to spend somehow these two hours to finish the game. Maybe in last game, coach told me something very bad, or I gave to coach to that technical foul, and next game he's seeing that, oh shit, this record is coming, sorry my language, but oh shit, this record is coming again, I don't like it. And, uh, and usually, many times the coaches started from the same position where, where we finished in the last game. Starts in, from the beginning, immediately start complaining, arguing, and, uh, but we need to survive in these two hours. We can help each other on the court. Uh, some ex examples uh, how we can help, help each other. Uh, We can learn from the each other mistakes. Like we had previous game, some mistake, referee made wrong decision, coach started complaining. Maybe this time coach can communicate another way. Or referee made a mistake, gave the after his mistake technical foul, and it, it's uh, not also good. And maybe referee thought after this game and this time he don't give the technical foul after his mistake. He tried to communicate with coach somehow to calm it when he or she is down and uh, solve the problem somehow with communication. The integrity of the sport demands good co cooperation between all participants, between referees, coaches, players, all all of between us. So, statement. How many statements are you do, saying in the game? What is statement? How many times are you saying? Traveling, foul. This is statement. Foul, example, foul is statement, traveling, out, it's uh, short, out of bounds, TV is traveling, if you see somewhere in the FIBA teaching materials, the short names, this is. Statement is coach opinion. This is his opinion, it's not a question. And referees don't have to answer to the statement. If there is good, every offense or defense coach says foul, traveling, okay, once, twice he's doing this, but if he's continued, like four or five offense or defense, whatever, then usually this is not part, this is the way how, how to communicate. And after this, usually coming. Friendly warning or official warning, and next time referee can give the technical foul. If you have something to misunderstanding on the game, ask the question. To the state statement, usually referees don't answer to you. Question. If coach asks, then why we don't answer always? What do you think? Why the referees don't answer always to you? Because of stupid questions. Stupid question. Oh, your presentation is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you ask the question? Which way? How you to be behave? This is the one point. When do you ask the question? 
Usually you are asking the question when the game is running, referee is working on the board, and the coach is asking, hey, why you didn't call the foul? This was the traveling term. You communicate during the game, and uh, we cannot answer during the game, especially if we have the whistle on the mouth. We can speak but, uh, when the whistle is in the mouth, but, but uh, it's hard. And what do you ask? Like you said in the beginning, it can be some stu stupid question or question. Uh, there is no sense to ask this kind of question during uh, this situation. What is the issue of the question? If you ask the question for the referees, what is the issue? <coughs> Why are you asking the questions? Okay. Why are you asking the questions for the reference? Sometimes emotions. Emotions. <laughs> right on. Different opinion. Different opinion. Get the information and clearness. Some something what happened in the game. What? Why? Some more examples. Janus. Still, I believe the referee is not under rules. But it's my opinion. Okay. <laughs> some of them, not all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan, some example. It was uh, five years ago when I was asking uh, with Mitra Fonsky some, uh, some question about the uh, game. And, uh, and uh, he told me exactly that uh, don't, don't uh, remind me about it. Okay. Don't argue with me. Yeah, because I don't okay. This is not a good, good answer. It was really good answer. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. So why the referee is, why the coach is asking to pressure the referee to make maybe next call to his team or her team, distract the referee's attention. The play is going. Coach is asking, hey, why you didn't the goal? Maybe referee start, start to think about the previous situation and something happened here and he missed, uh, he missed uh, when your team is in the defense, he missed some de defensive foul and this is one, uh, one issue why the coach is asking the questions like light ball situations. To change the game. Sometimes the coaches start to complain with the coach, the referees, to bad way to wake up his team, even to take the technical foul. Even the team are playing very badly. And sometimes I had this uh, yeah, in Euro Cup game situation in Frankfurt when the uh, Frankfurt was losing against Vitas, I think, by 20 points or something on the second quarter, and coach take, took that technical foul. After the game, he said, sorry, but I need to wake up my team. He took the technical foul by purpose. Uh, change the game. To referee start to speak with the coach, to, to uh, slow, down the, slow down the game. Maybe he need to change the game tempo, intensity, this is many points why the coaches are not asking the questions. Coach, coach question can distract the referee's decision in the future. Coach asks maybe once, twice, some situation and the referee start to mentally think, uh, maybe I need to some, somehow to fix it, to maybe uh, he will give the next call to his team, and uh, all these kind of situations are men mentally going to the referee's head and uh, this can distract the referee's mentality in the future. In the, let's say, on the third quarter, fourth quarter, if there is a decisive decision, maybe the referee don't take the 50-50 situation to his team, maybe to the opponent. 
communication, what referee is answering to the coaches. Like, uh, like I, I have said one example, uh, the, some foul situations. <coughs> what did you hurt? My bad. My bad. <laughs> My dad, some examples more. Not my son. Mm. Not my son. Why the referee is answering, not my son? Blaming the other guy. <laughs> not blaming? Uh, well, let's say, I'm speaking uh, at the moment, free BO, free referees on the court. Uh, even I'm in front of the coach, in front of the bench, and the situation happens, somewhere opposite. I'm so far away, I have some feeling that there was something, but I didn't have a clear view of these situations. Coach, like somebody said, coach are asking emotionals, and uh, I need also respect and trust my partners. There is a game, so in the game there is a lot of situation, I have feeling that there is something wrong, but if I'm looking, after, in the video, everything was correct. I, have, I don't have such kind of good position, such kind of good angle of this situation, and I cannot call from the feelings. If I don't see, I don't call. Does uh, all coaches know the rules? Like Janus said, all the referees even though don't know the rules. Sometimes the coaches know the rules better than the referees. That's true. Some of the coaches know very well the rules, but some of them don't know, and if there is some complaints, there can be happens. So from the, to the some re coaches, we can answer anything about that. Maybe this year get the new traveling rule. We can, there is some Strange situation on the court, referee, sometimes from the, some coaches he can say, new rule, coach said, okay, thank you, let's go. But if some coaches well, know very well rules, it's very hard to argue or have a conversation with them. Does all the referees communicating in the same way, same model? No. Referees are different people like you coaches. Some of you communicating good way, nice way, and your way. Some of them are uh, much more tougher for the referees and uh, also the referees communicating different ways. Uh, we're teaching them, it's uh, not easy to teach them how to communicate. This is coming from, with the experience. Uh, I can say, let's say Estonian League, the complete, yes, we have the problem with communication. The communication, the, some of the you coaches said that we can communicate with these referees who is, has uh, international games, FIBA games, VTB games. Yes, we see different way to communication from the coaches outside and uh, how to communicate. And also, the, it's not easy to say to the referees that in this situation you need to communicate this way, to say these words. The referees must feel by himself what he said, when he said, and how, how we respond for the referees, for the coach, sorry. Uh, experience versus rookie referee. What are you doing on, during the game? If you see there is coming one experience referee, uh, one, let's say, less experience referee. What are you starting to do during the game? Usually you start to complain or take the young rookie referee to, let's say, to work with him during the game. Maybe I will get some call from, from him and uh, this is how you are doing. But there is 
during the game. There is also a lot of situations when experienced referees are making the mistakes and you are not saying anything. Because you expect them, you trust them. But if the rookie referee are making the, even the right call, you are not agreeing. And, uh, okay, maybe they cannot sell the call, even the right call, like uh, sell the call a uh, good way, you don't trust them, and you start to still complaining with the less experienced referee when even he's making the right call. Wrong call. Somebody said, if I ask why you ask the, uh, what the referees are saying, Gert said bad call. I think with Ivar we had last year one situation when I said sorry, my mistake. And what Ivar said after this, do you remember? No. So you said thank you, I respect you more, and we go. Even referee can say my bad once per game. Yeah, there is some situation when we are making the mistake, after the goal I analyze, yes, I made the mistake, but I cannot take back the goal. And uh, I said to Ivar, sorry, my mistake. Ivar said, thank you, and we go and we finish the game good way. We didn't have any, any problem. And, but referee cannot say, sorry, my bad, five days, five times during the game then it's a big mess and, and it's, it's not good how to communicate. And then the coaches don't trust the referees if you're saying three or four times, sorry, my bad. Yes, we have in the game some 50-50 situations where the coaches has a different view, referees different view, and this is part of the game. But if the referees are making the mistake in the obvious play situation, this is bad. <laughs> if the coach asks the question, then be ready to listen the answer. So there is some examples. Uh, the referee, the coach asks the question. Hey, I want to go ask and ask some question and referee to start to respond to him. Coach turned his turned the back and oh, I don't want to. I know you what you say. And this is not how to communicate with the referees. If you ask the questions, then be ready to get the answer. If you don't want to get the answer, it means referees don't talk talk to you with this in this game and next communication is technical foul. <coughs> Be ready for the listening to answer. Now we have one example from basketball Champions League game. How the coach can see this situation? Send referee, center referee was in front of him. This situation happened opposite. And uh, like uh, you said before, you are asking emotions. But like, like you saw, 
this was clear board situations and uh, the coach couldn't see this situation anyway and he started to complain. If you also don't see, you need to analyze, maybe the referee was right, why he did not the goal, and uh, you cannot ask the, because the player has to ask to ask, ask the foul from the referee and then coach starting to ask the foul, but he didn't see the situation. Second clip. Okay, he, he, he had warning before. Now, coach and referee has the com communication. Referee complain, not to, to complain, explain to him. Communication finished and then he started again. This behavior is second technical foul and out. If the communication between the referees and coach is finished, then you don't need to shout afterwards or making this way or this way with the hands. Sorry my language, but this is the same like fuck you. If you are making this signal, this is immediately technical foul. Or this, if you are uh, waving your hands like this way. And this is, like you saw, the referee has right decision and the coach started complaining with the emotions. He didn't know the rule and the result was identical foul. Can I ask you a question? If the yeah. referee will say, how oh, are you calling this? How oh, are you feeling that? Bad communication. <coughs> Referee cannot do this. Like coach cannot do this, referee cannot also go to the hell or whatever. Some of them do it. Good to her. I need to deal with them. Or so I don't know where, but... Questions, examples, discussion. What do you want to ask? Could you remind us questions that can be reviewed by a video? IRS? Yeah. yeah. Uh, IRS situations is in the rule book. Uh, during the game, in any situation, referees can check two free points, was put on the line or not. We can check it uh, if we cannot we cannot stop the game immediately. If the game is going, we can go back two minutes. Like, we want to check this situation, 240, was the foot on the line or not? Two free points. Uh, foul on the two free points shot. If the shot is missing, was the foul two or three points? Was the leg on the line or not? Unsports like man foul. Disqualification foul, downgrade, upgrade. Uh, in any part of the game, this is all. End of the period, end of the quarter, uh, was shot on the line or off the line? Was the ball, ball already released from the hand or not? Uh, end of the period, uh, uh, foul of course, off the ball situation. Somebody is going to act of shooting and in the off, off ball situation there is a foul. Then we can check was the ball already, all the, was the act of shooting already started before the foul or not. Uh, last two minutes we have goal dating situations. If there is a ball that's the backboard and somebody tapped it off, then we can check. But referee has to call. He, he has to make the, the decision like two points and then they can go to the check. Last two minutes also out of bounds situation. Who was last to touch the ball? Uh, 
what else we have? Code endings. Uh, oh, clock. Oh, all the game also clock. Clock malfunctions. If there is some problem with the clock, clock was running when uh, it doesn't, or the clock was stopped for, for some reason. Uh, all the game we can check also the clock. Uh, and last two minutes we have the short end, end of the short clock period. Was the short clock online or not? Last two minutes of the fourth quarter? Yeah, or extra time. Over the over time. Questions? So, do you have any questions? I will be here also. If you don't want to ask here, I will be here. We can discuss talk during the break, coffee break. Do you agree before the game with the other two refs how tough you will allow to play or not? You don't discuss that. Uh, we are, let's say, I, I can speak. Uh, at the moment, how we are working in early. Uh, in the morning, we have, let's say, minimum one hour pre-game where we are scouting both of the teams. Usually one referee is taking one team, second uh, referee is taking the second team. We are scouting how they are playing in the defense, offense. Uh, all the players have, have some uh, moves, what they are doing. Some of them are doing illegal screens. Some of them starting the dribble, especially the post play, they raised the pivot foot before we were scouting the teams. And uh, of course, we discuss uh, what kind of criteria we have, uh, but also we're looking how they start to play. If, if we are feeling that the game is tough and we need to ball more, we, start, we ball them more to clean the game. But if both of the teams are playing, like run and gun style, and uh, we need to feel it. <clears throat> and how long does it take to prepare for your league game? Or Let's say uh, two, three days before I download the game. Like crew chief is saying to me that uh, you will scout uh, this team, and the second referee is scouting this team. I was usually one game, and we're using also, you know, the huddle system. In Euroleague we have also the huddle, that all the games are cut in all the situation. Uh, I got them, let's say, it takes two, three hours to prepare the clips, to, to scout the team, and then we discuss with the crew in the morning pre-game meeting on the, on the game day. This is, yeah. uh, do you see the different styles of uh, refereeing uh, in the whole world? If I'm speaking in handball, example, when we go to play in Finland, yeah. the Finland referees are used to play like basketball. If you touch a little bit, it's a foul. When we go to Lithuania, there's a big war going on. And uh, I see a lot of... Uh, in different regions, different, yes, different styles. Yes. Yeah, we have also... Say, let's say if you are, like I can say, if we are going to that, uh, I can, with the big game, I'm going with Latvian Lithuanian referee, it's much more easier to officiate. I know their style, we are in the, from the same region, and we understand the same way the game. But uh, yeah, it's, sometimes it's different to have the same, same criteria with the Spanish coaches or Balkan coaches, whatever, if we speak about the Euro. Yeah, but this is. Uh, there is differences to go, uh, in the play calling situation. But I don't. Just question: Do you not make scouting in a stolen block? Uh, all the referees are 
as the full-time job. And uh, it's, let's say, in regular season game we're not doing, but uh, for the playoffs, uh, last year, not in all games, uh, not in all games, but we did it in some games. Uh, but for next to the job, it's, it's not easy. But in, in early, we're going one day earlier. Sometimes I'm doing the scouting in the play. I don't download the game and I do it on the play. But uh, next to the job, it's, it's not easy. Some of the coaches complain after the game that the opponent team made three times more uh, free throws. Do you think it's a fair criteria for judging about the referee? Team? Depends on the game. Maybe your team played, played zone and use it in the, in the zone defense, there is less fouls. Or your team, opponent team played uh, defense, uh, defense, uh, let's say, yeah, there is complaints, even without fouls, they put defense, and uh, your team played with the hands, with pushing, pumping, whatever, and this is, this is the complaints, even to, during the game, hey, look, on my team has five fouls, they have one or zero, uh, but sometimes the coaches don't realize how the game is going, and uh, what is the criteria, and uh, this, uh, this is the complaints here. Yeah. This is the reality. And let's say after five minutes the fouls are usually equal or on the next next uh, quarter there is uh, your team has zero fouls and the opponent has the five fouls. This is the reality. Uh, so I will finish with one clip how to communicate. <coughs> Thanks, Ryan. Now, Bergman is. Oh, yeah, Russell is here. So I think we can we can start immediately with uh, the next two. Are you ready? 